Patients at the VA hospital in Phoenix were having trouble getting in to see their primary doctor, but then whistleblower Dr. Sam Foote dropped a bombshell saying there were actually two lists at that hospital. One was on the computer that everyone saw showing that patients were being seen in a timely manner and a secret list written by hand that no one saw. On that list, veterans waited months, sometimes more than a year to get their appointments. The director of the Phoenix VA, Sharon Hellman, at the time said this. Listen. I have never directed staff to do a secret waiting list. But more employees at the Phoenix VA began coming forward, like this man. Listen. They're flat out lying. That's why Dr. Foote came out. That's why I'm here to support Dr. Foote, because I know firsthand. I've seen it. I've done it. I've used it. We did it every day. They're absolutely lying. So the Kelly file went back to Director Sharon Hellman's home after she was put on administrative leave. She didn't answer. Watch this. Mrs. Hellman, this is Jovian from Fox News, The Kelly File. Can we please speak with you? Not a word, but the families of the veterans who died spoke plenty loud, like the family of Thomas Breen, who came in with blood in his urine and died of bladder cancer before he was ever diagnosed or treated. And James Pert, who died of skin cancer, he did not know that he had. And there was Pedro Valdez, who came in because he could not breathe. He was sent home. He later died of respiratory failure. Listen. I still think that he was loyal to that hospital because he was loyal to his country. and He just had that faith that they would be loyal to him in return. And it never happened. 40 families, Megan, with very similar heartbreaking tales. Megan. It's not right. Trace, thank you. Well, as this scandal unfolds, we are hearing suggestions that the problems at the VA point to some much bigger issues with big government programs. We'll dig into that. And we'll speak with our panel next and hear directly from real-life veterans and their families as they share their message for Washington. I have had no... No luck at all. I've called there constantly from November to this month and not been able to get in. These are all people. We're not numbers. We are proud Americans. I want to know if the people are going to actually stand up and say, we have to start taking care of our veterans. 13, um, waiting for care, delayed care, aid and assistance. It took months. They wouldn't call us back. Finally, when they did, the appointments were set out two months in advance. It took two months to see his prostate, his cancer doctor, when they found out he did have cancer. It just seems so unfair that after all they've been through, that they have to wait so long in order to get an appointment to have items taken care of. It certainly does. That was more of that town hall meeting in Arizona. Uh, injured over 20 years ago in the Navy. Uh, got out, never thought I'd be back in. I went back into the Air Force after 9-11. Uh, over the last 11 years, the back has progressively gotten worse. We're in the last two years. Uh, it's to the point where I'm, I'm going to need some additional help. Mm -hmm. uh, I filed my claim uh, towards the beginning of this year, so I'm heading into my fifth month of, of waiting uh, on the initial claim, and that's just to be processed to say, yes, you can receive treatment. And then I have to get in another line uh, after that one is done so that I can actually get the treatment and I've lost probably I would say in the last couple months about 10% feeling in my left leg. Oh my goodness. Amber, let me ask you, Amber Barnes. Individuals that I should go, I should uh, enroll, it'd be seamless, it's nice and easy, it's going to be for the better and uh, the day I went down there um, after kind of mustering up the courage to do so I was kind of nervous about just being involved in the system itself. Um, I spoke to a woman who was not the most professional woman uh, to begin with. She gave me my paperwork to fill out to enroll and um, I handed it in to her when I was finished and she told me unfortunately the person that was there to take my paperwork and to uh, take new um, veterans into the system was not there that day and to come back next week. Uh, I was frustrated at that. So I, you're there but just yeah. because one woman's not there you have to leave and come back. Exactly. Uh, so I did that. I came back the next week. I handed in my paperwork. Um, that person was not there again. They told me they'd call me they never did. Um, I called them, and when I did, they uh, told me they had no, no record of my information there. Okay. I'm talking about personal information, uh, DD-214s that have your Social Security number on there, your whole military history, uh, just gone. 
So after that, I walked away and I, I sought uh, civilian health care. Dying mm -hmm. as a result of these delays, and you personally have heard some of those stories. Well, absolutely. I served three secretaries. Uh, my former boss was on your show uh, the other the other week, Secretary Principi. Um, and what's been shocking about this is the total ethical breakdown. It's not shocking that that there might be some gaming of the system, but and that the wait times may be busted. What's shocking is that that the gaming has gone to the point of causing veterans death. That was always an ethical line, and I am sure that they are shocked in central office as to do this. And my personal belief, as my boss said, um, about the, uh, the ethical problems here with being criminal, is that in 2010, there was the smoking memo. I read that memo, nine pages. They did the right thing in 2010 by putting that out and said, stop it. All vision directors, stop it. Right. Every vision director who's still there and every medical center director, where any of the scandal is, Phoenix, Chicago, they should be basically fired. And what you can do is, although you can't really fire them out of the VA, you can relieve them of command, like in my Air Force, they just did with nine officers. Shinseki should be relieving every single one of those VISN and every one single of those medical center directors who have not followed that directive and have problems, they should be relieved of command immediately. When you say VISN, explain. We don't know what that is. A, the VISN is the regional office, so to speak, okay. that can, runs the medical centers and the current VHA okay. nominee. That's how crazy. Definitely. He's, if you were ever at the VA, you'd understand that next to God is the VA secretary. What that guy does and what he shows, and he hasn't shown anything. He hasn't been communicating. He has been talking to the employees. He has been talking to the veterans. He has become part of the problem. How, help us understand, as somebody who worked with you know, the prior administration on, on veterans' issues, how does it happen that we get specific reports saying that the delays are ridiculous, months and months and long, and there's active fraud in covering them up? And here we are six years after those reports are generated, and nothing's changed. President Bush did not address this, and President Obama has not. How? How does that happen? The presidents rely on the secretary. The secretary gets briefed every week on all this stuff. And he then either does something about it or he leads it to his deputy secretary. Do you think Shinseki didn't know that this was happening? No, he had to have known. But he probably left it, I'm guessing, he probably left it to his deputy secretary to handle it. He's also part of the problem. He's brought up a new, v, uh, Obama's nominated a new VHA replacement undersecretary who's been, also been part of the problem, mm -hmm. Dr. Murkowski. And, and he needs to go as well because he's tainted. He was one of those vision directors, regional office directors. I just have to ask this one last question. Do you believe, because most of the men and women who work at the VA have dedicated their lives to helping veterans, they actually do care about veterans' care, do you believe that these people at these select facilities were actively committing fraud knowing that it could lead to the deaths of veterans? Go ahead. Well, a absolutely they were. Uh, it, it was around their bonuses and keeping their jobs and making themselves look good. And so instead of actually fixing the problem, they put more effort into hiding the problem. New questions about big government programs. Pete Hegseth is an Iraq and Afghanistan war veteran, CEO of Concerned Veterans for America and a Fox News contributor. And Robert Zimmerman is a Democratic strategist and co-founder and partner of Zimmerman et al. Good to see you both. Pete. Good to be with you. Uh, I mean, this is so disturbing because we've heard the veterans directly talking about this. And I know you say in the veterans community for years now, there's been a cynical refrain of delay, deny, wait till I die. What do you think this scandal says about the VA system, Obamacare and big government in general. This scandal shows us that VA is an infected system, inherently a system that is inefficient, doesn't deliver timely care to veterans because it is government run, top down, single payer health care. This is what looks like when government runs uh, your health care, when there is a bureaucracy between you and your doctor. And while Obamacare is not single payer. This is very much a preview of what Obamacare could look like and is starting to look like for more Americans. You know, Less choice, higher cost, more bureaucracy, more paperwork, and likely delays and rationing because when you've got a fixed amount and the government controls it, there's only so much you can provide. So veterans have seen a preview of Obamacare. It's called what they're experiencing, unfortunately, in many places at the Department of Veterans Affairs. You know, Affairs. Megan, 